We're now going to have a look at what's called small signal analysis for the transistor. Remember we're interested in using the transistor as an amplifier and that means the transistor has to be in the active region. What we're trying to do now is develop a linear model that describes the behavior of the transistor when it's in the active region. Now we need to make sure that the signals aren't too large the signals are too large, then the nonlinearities in the transistor will come in and ruin things for us. So um, at some point we'll understand what small signal means, um, but in the meantime we'll just forge ahead. So we just need to start with these equations. We've got the fundamental equation, which we know is always true. We've got the, qu the equation connecting the collector current and the base current in the active region. And this one is new, sort of. Um, this connects the collector current to the base emitter voltage. And it looks very much like the diode equation because it essentially is the diode equation, but um, as it pertains to the base emitter junction of the transistor as opposed to the PN junction of a diode. This is the thing that's going to cause us most grief because it's clearly nonlinear and so we've got to do something clever about this. Let's see how we might do that. So let's take a closer look at this equation. So on the left hand side we've got the total collector current which is equal to the DC collector current plus the AC collector current and that's equal to the equation on the previous page. Now we'll split VBE up into its two components, the DC part and the AC part, and we'll see where that goes. So we just use the result that um, uh, the, uh, the exponential of a sum is equal to a product of the exponentials to split that out like this. And the crucial step is from here to here where we've replaced e to the VBE over VT with 1 plus VBE over VT. Now all we've done is make use of Taylor's expansion for e to the power of x, which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial and so on. If x is small, then these higher order terms get uh, smaller still. For example, if x was say 0.1, then the series on the right hand side would be 1 plus 0.1 plus, well 0.1 squared is 0 0.01, 0 0.01 divided by 2 is 0 0.005, uh, plus progressively smaller terms. So you can see to some level of accuracy, e to the 0.1 is approximately 1.1. And this is what we're going to assume um, in our uh, linearization of this nonlinear equation, provided our x, which is VBE over VT, is small enough, say in the order of 0.1, then this step here is quite legitimate. And so what we're suggesting is that E to the VBE over VT is approximately 1 plus VBE over VT provided VBE over VT is less than 0.1 or VBE is less than about 0.1 VT. Now remember that VT is in the order of 25 or 26 millivolts, so that means that VBE needs to be less than one tenth of that or in the order of 2.5 to 2.6 millivolts. So that's what we mean by a small signal provided VBE is kept down to just a few millivolts, this approximation um, is valid and therefore it's okay to go from here to here. So that's why we've got the approximation sign because we're going from the full exponential to this linear expression. All right, so returning to this term here, we now recognize that this must be the DC collector current, right? Because with just the DC voltage, VBE there, this expression must be just I, um, big IC, the quiescent current. 
um, for the transistor. So we can replace this term here with IC. Then we can multiply out the brackets. IC times 1 is IC. Big IC over big VT times VBE. And crucially, we see that the, I, the um, DC IC value appears on both sides of the equation, so that can be cancelled out. So let's see how that works. We cancel out the DC collector current, meaning that we're just left with the AC collector current on the right hand side, the AC base emitter voltage, and these two terms here. This uh, expression here, IC over VT, is given a new name. It's called the transconductance of the transistor. Trans meaning across, in this case across from the input, VBE, to the output, IC, and conductance because it's got units of Siemens, right? Amps divided by volts is inverse ohms or Siemens. So we've got this very nice relationship now, a nice linear relationship between the small signal collector current and the small signal base of inner voltage and this new transistor parameter for us called the transconductance. There's one more very interesting thing and that is that the transconductance, which is an AC parameter, depends on the DC collector current. So this is a very interesting result and it means that we can't really do an AC analysis of the circuit until we have already done a DC analysis. For example, if you've used LT SPICE, when you run an AC analysis, it can't do that until it's done its own DC analysis because in this case it needs to know what is the quiescent current in the transistor because without that we can't work out the transconductance. All right, let's keep going. We can, we can extract a bit more out of this equation before we're done. So we can now actually get uh, delve into um, the input side of the transistor from the same equation because the collector current is equal to beta times the base current. So beta IB is equal to GM VBE. Well, we can rearrange this equation to get VBE over IB, which is beta over GM. Now VBE over IB is, by definition, the input resistance of the transistor. That's the small signal input resistance. And this turns out to be this very simple expression here. We give this uh, ratio, the small signal input resistance, the special symbol R pi. Now we can go a bit further. If R pi is equal to beta over GM, GM remember was IC divided by VT. But IC divided by beta is just IB, the DC base current. The VT pops up to the numerator. And we're left with this, R pi is the thermal voltage divided by the DC base current. And that's nice and tidy really. So GM, remember, was the collector current divided by the thermal voltage. R pi is the thermal voltage divided by the base current. And again, R pi depends on the DC state of the circuit. So we cannot calculate R pi until we know what the DC base current is. Now, taking these equations, the collector current um, being equal to the transconductance times the base emitter voltage and the uh, R pi being the resistance between the base and the emitter terminals. Now this suggests a way forward for coming up with a model for the transistor. So let's just take those equations and see if we can't nut out an equivalent circuit. So here's the first relationship we got, the linear connection between the collector current and the base emitter voltage. This suggests that the collector current is controlled by the base emitter voltage. 
So why don't we make the collector current equal to a voltage controlled current source? Uh, pi was simply the resistance looking into the base and emitter terminals. So why don't we put a resistor in there? And so this is what we do. Here is the outside view of the transistor and internally we're suggesting that between the base and the emitter we put a resistor equal to R pi and between the collector and the emitter we put a voltage controlled current source and that's it. This is the small signal equivalent circuit of the bipolar junction transistor. So when we're doing an analysis we simply have to replace the transistor with this equivalent circuit. And notice how the so-called electronics has again been reduced to simple linear circuit theory where we have a simple resistor and a simple dependent current source. These calculations we know how to do well. Now this isn't the only possible um, expression that we could have. It's possible to just change this slightly. Let's have a look at how that might work. So the collector current is equal to the transconductance times VBE. But VBE is equal to the base current times R pi. Um, but GM times R pi is just equal to beta. So we could exchange our voltage controlled current source for a current controlled current source. There's nothing we can do with R pi, so that stays the same. So we can replace GMVBE down here with beta times IB. They're both current sources. One is nominally controlled by the base emitter voltage. The other is controlled by the base current flowing through R pi. Which one do we use? Well, whichever one you feel like, unless you're being told to use one in particular. Sometimes the equations come out slightly more elegant using one model as opposed to the other. Um, but uh, there's no way to really know in advance which one that is.